Hi, Marty Duda here with another 13th Floor Music Talk interview. Today I'm talking to blues traveler guitarist Chan Kinchla about their new album, Traveler's Blues. The band has just returned to the road and Chan tells us what he did during lockdown to keep his chops tight. I'm torn down, almost level with a brown. Whereabouts are you today? I'm in Los Angeles, California, where I live. We just got off tour, got a week off or so, and then we're back at it. Yeah, how's how's the road? Fabulous. We uh, <laughs> we started off at Red Rocks, right? July fourth, right? The Fourth of July thing. Yeah, that's right, and uh, that was our first show for the public, right? In uh, 15, 16 months, so. It was quite a welcome back, and it was it was just great to get back out um, and try out some of this new material. And right. just it's so funny, you know. We started out at Red Rocks. You'd think we'd be nervous, but we were like just utterly excited. And you know, within a couple songs, we it was like uh, it was like riding a bike. We were right there, but uh, maybe a little more amped up, and the crowd was <laughs> sensational. Oh, that's great. Well, I I got to figure. I mean, you guys have been doing this for like thirty some years so Indeed. it must be like go, going home taking that stage especially a place that you played so often it is i mean i love you know i've been doing it my whole adult life so for me being on the tour bus hotel rooms backstage being on stage sound check talking smack with the crew right waking up in my bunk not quite knowing where in the country i am <laughs> uh it's just all of it's fabulous so you know it is like home uh, see a lot of people would take all those to be negatives <laughs> well to me you know it, honestly as long as there's a you know the great thing about tours there's always a show at the end of the day so it's right, all right. gearing up to this fabulous experience that um yeah. i wanted to be you know when i was a little kid playing really badly uh <laughs> in my room at like 13 right all i wanted to do was play in a cool rock band you know for in front of people. Yeah. And, uh, you know, all this time later to be doing that, as, as I say, the more I do it, the more I like it. Cool, cool, cool. So because there was such a, a, a long space of time between shows, did you guys have to do much to kind of get up to speed? We did zero. <laughs> we just right. hit it. <laughs> then people asked us, we we're like, I mean, to be honest, I spent this whole year off, the whole year off, yep. just, woodshedding and playing playing hours and hours every day um so i was probably as on top of my chops and and yeah. i added a lot of stuff you know you never know how that stuff's gonna transpose to the live when, you, when you're gonna have the, the guts to actually try out some of these new runs or scales or licks that you've uh, you've been working on yeah but it, my chops were as tight and and i know a lot all the guys in the band had been that downtime it was a great chance to practice which is right. something when you're touring and doing records you know you're so focused on that yep just practicing the craft sometimes it's you know catch as catch can and uh so we were all really on our game and uh strangely enough uh we didn't so we didn't we did sound check for a couple hours and then hit the hit the ground running cool cool and you did record an album during that time. <laughs> we did. We did. Which is uh, Traveler's Blues, which is out uh, this, this following Friday, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Indeed, on the 30th. Yeah, so how are you feeling about that? That was great. Um, probably for the last decade, we've tossed around the idea of doing a blues record, which yep. is what this is. Yep. Um, the band, being the name is Blues Traveler, we actually in high school as like white kids from the Jersey suburbs <laughs> were uh, started out as a blues band. And right. I think what we always loved about blues is it was, it's improvisational and kind of captures the moment. You know, it's yep. always different depending on the mood. You can change the tempo and the speed and the intensity and the volume and get totally different feels for all these classic songs or any song you write. Yeah. Um, so that improvisational aspect was what we loved about it. Um, and 
we love all kinds of music. So slowly but surely all, you know, the name kind of works. We, we added all these other elements and we turned into what we are, but. Right. <laughs> um, so as I say, this is kind of the, the, the blues album we wanted to make when we were 15, but we couldn't. Right. Um, so this idea has been kind of going around and we had, uh, we had just done a studio, uh, original studio record in 2019. Um, uh, hurry up and hang around. So we weren't really ready to embark on that. Yep. And all the elements just came together. And once we realized we were really going to be off for the year, um, we just got on planes and uh, shacked up in Nashville for a month and knocked this thing out. Um, right, right. And it was, thank God, it was great to kind of have some focus for this downtime. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so you didn't waste much time recording this album in Nashville. You, you worked with your producer, Matt Rawlings, and didn't take long, right? No, we uh, we would just come in with a song a day. You know, yeah. we'd... we'd We'd go, we, you know, after banding around for months on emails and getting a, a short list, um, we would go song at a time and we would listen back to, and usually we go back to the most, the earliest original take, sometimes from the 1930s of these songs. Yep, yep. And then use those for inspiration as opposed to the more contemporary kind of uh, blues, English blues style ones. A lot of these, you know, songs were covered later on. Yep. Um, and so we could kind of, and in some cases we really wanted to honor the original style and we thought it was kind of neat for us to hear us playing like these old time thirties yep. to fifties blues guys, like the yep. Mississippi Sheiks or. Right. Yeah. Sitting Reed on top of the world or, is what the twenties, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Or, uh, Jimmy Reed from the fifties, you know, yep. I mean, Jimmy Reed was like, he was like rock and roll before there was any crossover rock and roll. I mean, those songs are still classics to this day that everyone knows. Exactly. Um, and in some cases, it was kind of cool to kind of to do our version, like try and copy those. And in some versions like uh, Funky Bitch, it was kind of fun to take them in our own kind of blues traveler direction. Right. In most cases, we go back to the old versions and then just with Matt, who we trust so much and is such a great musician himself, um, just try a few different angles, figure out <coughs> tempo and the approach and then we would just record them that afternoon and evening and and those all the tracks are pretty much uh straight straight playthroughs there's not any overdubs or even right. any fixes because we'd uh you know by the time we got to the evening we'd played them a bunch and it really hashed them out um and we kept it really simple because that's the way they were back in the day and and also back in the day they weren't a lot of overdubs or fixes or <laughs> or pro tools moving stuff around or so we wanted to kind of keep it in that spirit because that's what blues is so little warts some personality some, yep, yep, some yep. a little bit of this and that so very cool we kept it we kept it in that spirit yeah and so I think it, you know how I think did you Sounds was like there much that. discussion about uh, the uh, the song, the track list, the songs? Because the the, uh, the selections are endless as far as what you could have chosen. So, how much discussion within the band was there? It, tons. Um, <laughs> you know, we uh, it was just a large email chain between right. the five of us, um, Matt Rollins, Josh, the head of Round Hill Records, and our manager. Right. Just. Everyone doing short list after short list and short lists of short lists. In the end, I got to give Matt Rollins uh, the credit for curating the final list from the the big glob of yeah. of uh, songs that everyone had thrown at him as a kind of a cool cross section to kind of reference a lot of different eras and blues and get some some funky things like crazy or right. uh, roadhouse blues, just a little different. Yep. Or the JJ Kale, um, and then a lot of the old trad blues. We wanted to kind of a, a mix of that, so we could kind of try some different uh, approaches to it. Yep. And you you have a pretty impressive list of guests that sit in and play. And was oh my that gosh, that was that was <laughs> our favorite part. I'll bet. So how did how did that work with COVID and all that stuff happening? That was tricky. It's a good. That's a good question. Um, because when we did go, there were all the protocols, so they couldn't really come down or even fly in, it was, in a lot of cases, that was, you know, we we asked a lot of friends, Matt Matt and us both have uh, 
pretty we're, we all know a lot of the same people because he's played with so many different people um yeah. he's an incredible piano player um so we had this great list up but we weren't really sure who could make it who would be yep. available yep. to get in the studios people were you know quarantined all over the country this is you know september yeah, october we... november when things are getting pretty dark yep um so matt rollins did a lot of the the logistics so we got all these tracks done john sang on them we got them all finished and then it was kind of like uh christmas to hearing matt would finally get you know warren on something or yeah sometimes we didn't know who he was going to be able to get we knew we had these spots we we're like we need something here or something would be cool here and then we get the tracks back so i got to give our fearless producer matt rollins all the credit for uh coordinating all that and getting it done because yeah, it was I'm fun for was us pretty, to hear them as they came down the pike it's pretty cool i think one of my favorite ones is the possibly the least bluesy more of a 50s kind of thingy uh need your love so bad with the war and treaty it's they do a beautiful job on write it on paper so we can be ready to me tell me you love me and stop driving me mad because i need it all love so bad Yeah, um, I think that might be my favorite song in the record, the oh, there you go. favorite track. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, so many different, I mean, it was just, it's just so outside of the box, some of the stuff. Yeah. It's surprising to me how comfortable we, it felt doing it, you know? Uh, and it, it's neat playing some of that stuff live. It adds kind of a cool, uh, different element to the live shows for us. Because um, once you slow it down and get kind of in that, world then we go back to our crazy uh rock improv you know jamming uh yep. it makes that sound fresh again so i think it's you know it's good it it was a great pro it was a great uh exercise for us too <laughs> yeah because otherwise there's like a thing like tore down which just rocks out and you know yeah that's that's <laughs> a little more in our wheelhouse that was, yeah, a, that was a late. <laughs> now speaking of your wheelhouse i mean a lot of folks identify you guys with the 90s because that was when the hits came and uh you know 95 96 it's freaking 25 years ago now uh yeah. so uh how, how, how do you relate to that time now a lot of people love nostalgia and you know the 90s well, is kind I'm of sure the, yeah i mean i have a ton of nostalgia for that period too that that was a great ride i mean like most <laughs> most um most bands never even get that ride. You know, we were sure. at the time, we were very much kind of following the uh, like the fish and widespread panic. We were just happy building our live thing. And and we were that was playing live and um, rocking the people was kind of what our main focus was. Right. And we were always doing albums and trying to get songs on the radio. But the last thing we really expected to be like top top 40 right. uh, hits. <laughs> So we were as surprised as anyone, and we just had fun with it. You know, we got to do all kinds of neat stuff like Saturday Night Live and be in movies and, you know, and uh, made a ton of cash. And, you right. know, some 26, 27 year old kids, it was, it was wasted, trust me. But uh, <laughs> sure, <laughs> it was a fun ride. And, uh, but once the dust settled with all that, and unfortunately, Bobby, uh, our original bass player, passed away. Yep. We really, you know, it was back to what we always wanted to do, yeah, which is just uh, put on good live shows and tour and be creative. And so it's it's been a natural evolution. You know that that era, it was just such a different time from uh, the way people consume music. So it's yeah. hard to really compare it. Yep, yep. But it was what it was, and it sure was a fun ride. <laughs> yeah, the music business is very different today. Indeed, and, uh, and of course. Uh, especially for bands like you live the live thing is where all the money is being made and probably all the fun is being had so what what were you thinking during the COVID 
lockdown? Were you were you worried that this was not going to end? <laughs> oh no! I mean, I knew it was going to come back. I mean, to be honest, people have been telling us to take a year off for like twenty yeah, years, <laughs> and we never have. So right. it took an international pandemic to uh, a global pandemic to get us off the road, um, right. and it was probably good for us. Like I said, I just practiced, and I know we all tried some different things just to kind of get a, a break you know, was probably good. It's not like I needed it. I was looking forward to touring before it happened. Yep. Um, but it was nice, I think, for us all to get a little break, a little reset, and uh, get fired up for the next 30 years. Right, right, right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Fantastic. That's the way to think about it. Now, going back to the album, uh, we, we touched on I Need Your Love So Bad, which is a favorite of both of ours, it seems. Uh, cool. Is there something else that stands out that you remember when recording or... Well, I mean, my the one that goes over best live, and the one I like that's just all a blues traveler, and yep, is a, a, to me it's it's funky bits. It's a nice combination of traditional blues, but we added some blues traveler kind of character to it. Every time I see her, she's wearing those fancy clothes. Every time I see her. She's wearing those fancy clothes She took up all the money And then she threw up on me out the Lord knows I'm standing now I ain't got nowhere to go Lord knows I'm standing now Right. Um, it's an old Sun Seal song, isn't it? Indeed. And, you know, it's very straight 12 bar the way Sun Seals did it. Um, we kind of added like a cool gospel meets uh, Prince kind of right. vibe to it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, but it was the first song we actually did. And, you know, we weren't really sure how we were going to approach these. And, and a few uh, events started playing that kind of organ riff. And, yeah. The whole thing kind of just fell together and we realized, you know, we the sky's the limit with all these tracks. We can be creative. Yeah. And and these songs, you know, are all so neat in the you know, blues, the simplicity of it gives you a lot of room to right. to experiment, which is right. what the beauty of, of the, the form is. Yeah. Um and so that one all of a sudden we realized this is gonna be great and we <laughs> dove in. And yeah. uh but that song goes over insanely live because it's got you know it goes from so quiet to big back to quiet up and down yep and uh that's where matt got me to really not play fast and to just just do some play some blues and uh it was great to get back in touch with that and there's a nice stinging guitar right right at the front of it i think so yeah uh, your guitar playing has it evolved changed always yeah always you know i like uh I forget stuff that I should go back to and I learn new stuff that's, you know, better than before. Um, so, you know, I think what's kept us uh, kind of into it is we're constantly trying new new things, trying new directions, experimenting with stuff. Sometimes it's a horrible idea. Yep. Sometimes they're, they're better ideas. But, uh, you know, I'm always searching. And as this record was kind of a nice uh, reminder that, slowing down and letting the notes sing a little bit is probably a good idea. Right. So is this kind of set the table for whatever the next Blues Traveler original album will be? Have you thought about that? You know what? I'm sure because it was such a cool stripped down process and it really sounds like us, <laughs> I think um, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly sure that this, when we do get back in for a studio of uh, originals, We'll probably take some lessons from this and keep it keep it nice and stripped down because I do think we always have so many ideas between us all. We sometimes just pile too much onto it. I think um, less is more. Right. Well, I got to say it's nice to talk to somebody in a band who's actually got a, a series of gigs lined up and they're on the road finally because it's been a year of just misery for a lot of people. Yes, <laughs> it's been rough. Um, but you know. Uh, as long as everyone gets vaxxed up, I think we'll be all right. I got mine yesterday. Good. <laughs>
<laughs> and uh, someday we'd love to give it back down to Australia again. One All right. Days. Have you been to New Zealand before? We've never been to New Zealand, no. Oh, you got to come on down. Oh, uh, that's what I hear. Yeah, One of these days, it's far away. <laughs> well, you know. It's... No, I'd love to. I'd love to. <laughs> All righty. Well, thanks for sharing with me. Uh, the album is fantastic. Looks like you guys are having a ball. So that's so good... far so good. Excellent. All righty. Great talking to you, brother. I appreciate it. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thanks, Bye.